What's up YouTube? Supernova back again. Uh, I'm not going to say this is the final video, but it's, I would say, second to last video, maybe, of the engine rebuild of the 2003 Nissan Altima 2.5. So, we're going to I kind of got carried away. I uh, was going to make a video of installing the cylinder head, but I didn't. I don't think. Uh, I was kind of time crunched on trying to get the engine built. And I did. A buddy of mine came over and we got the engine, engine installed. I got my brake in oil put in. Amsoil break in oil straight 30 weight. So put five quarts of that in there. It holds four and a half. Put five after it got primed up. I had to add a whole nother quart. I just put standard motor oil in there to mix it in. So don't so the break in doesn't wear too much on it. But it's just a break in the new rings that's it uh it's also good for breaking in uh, flat tap of cams which the cams on this are already broken in i'm using factory cams so the exhaust manifold is off of course it is loud um oh okay exhaust manifold is off it is gonna be loud but i got it running uh it just put in most of everything's plugged uh hooked up i need to get me a new water pump uh get me a new water pump on there it's an external water pump that's a weird thing nissan uses external pumps honda and toyota uses internal pumps and what I mean by internal is I'm talking about they're behind the timing cover on timing belts. Um, some cars do internal on timing chains. Nissan, however, does external water pumps on their timing chain motors that I know of. So I'm going to crank it up. It is loud, but I got everything primed up. The motor's primed up. Fuel system's primed up. It's gonna be loud and I can't run it for too long because there ain't no cooling in it. So I can only run it for like maybe a minute, if that. As you see, it's got, if you can see that, 215,168 miles. So on the previous engine before i rebuilt it. and like i said there was nothing wrong with it there it wasn't smoking didn't well i mean it had a loss of power but there's that was due to a crap load of carbon build up inside of the intake it was almost building over the in, uh, injectors so but here we go I get the exhaust manifold on it'll purr like a kitten so but there you go um i got some fluid coming to do a complete transmission flush uh ams oil fluid of course so i can try to make the transmission last longer i'm not no transmission man by no means i mean i could tell you how they work as far as rebuilding one i've never done that before 
so I'm not even going to try to explain how to rebuild one but I will say this if this transmission ever goes out I'm going to go to Advanced Auto and get a complete reman dyno tested transmission and I'm going to tow this thing on my car trailer over there to a transmission shop and I'm going to pay them to swap it out because this transmission is not coming out at my house and after getting to looking at it I'm going to explain why the only way to get this transmission out is if I take the motor back out and I'm not about to do that because I was seriously the time of cover was rubbing up against the body at the same time the flywheel was scraping the bell house and that's how tight this engine bay is going this way it's weird how they even put a v6 in cars like these much less a four cylinder um, the transmission it can't come up nor can it go down uh, reason being the transmission sticks about that far in between the body and the frame down there so there's no room to come up or out so that's why I just rather pay the money for a shop to swap it out if it ever goes out so but I'm gonna do a flush and hopefully it'll prolong the life of it something I wanted to bring attention to y'all when doing a timing chain on these motors where you rebuild one or you set the timing chain yourself or you're just doing a complete timing set I'm gonna tell you something all right on the intake sprocket it's just it's the hydraulic sprocket makes it adjustable okay there's a notch on the face and 90 degrees to that there's a notch that goes this way on the sleeve that it looks like a sleeve that goes around the sprocket because the sprocket is about that thick it operates by hydraulic pressure there's a notch on the face 90 degrees to that is a slot on the sleeve on top of the it's on top of the intake cam do not set there's two yellow not there's two yellow chain links on the time of chain and one orange link the orange link is going to go on your on the notch of your timing gear there's a notch on the timing gear itself on the crank you line it up with that and there's a also a notch for your balance shaft okay the notch on your the notch on the smaller sprocket is your timing chain the notch on your bigger socket is for your balance shaft chain all right you line up your orange notch with the smallest sprocket on the crank and the two notches you line up with the notch on your exhaust cam the intake cam do not line up with the face notch line it up with the notch that's on the sleeve it's a big huge groove and at the end of that groove close to the teeth you're going to find a little gray dot or whatever color they used for that year model line it up with that and it will be in time i scratched my head you know confused as hell for about an hour because i would take a screwdriver and i would stick it down a spark plug tube and i would rotate it and watch the valves open and close for each stroke it was not in time whatsoever come to find out i had it lined up on the wrong notch i had it lined up on the face notch rather than the groove that's on top of the sleeve so for future reference when you're doing a time of chain set or engine rebuild and you line up that time of chain on the intake cam line it up with that notch there's a little gray dot it's very easy to miss so just to prevent future headache there you go also if you decide to pull one of these motors out okay remove the hallmark balancer 
you will not get this motor out if you don't remove that um, it don't take much pressure to remove it it's not like most of your domestic cars where you gotta get a puller and you gotta really tighten down on it to get the harmonic balancer puller off this one don't take much pressure at all I mean I used a standard valve spring compressor tool I locked the teeth in I just started twisting it just pulled it right off you can't pull off by hand you need some type of puller so but there you go fully rebuilt motor um, I'm gonna make another video after I get my water pump in and uh, put the water pump on and I'll let y'all hear it with the exhaust fully put together so but uh, hopefully within this year I'll be able to start buying parts for this thing so I can start doing the engine build on that because that's why I'm really looking forward to doing videos on so and it's that's going to be a five to seven thousand dollar build right there but it'll be under ten uh so but until next time peace out god bless